Hello everyone. You may have seen a lot of temples in India. You may have also seen many deities in different forms. But for sure, if you want to exactly remember the murti or the idol that you have seen in the temple, it's really hard to do so. But this is not the case with the Puri Jagannath Swami. If you at least see the poster of these deities, you will definitely remember it forever. They'll grab your attention for sure. Do you know that these idols are made completely out of wood? Yes, they are. Not only this, in every 12 to 19 years, these idols are replaced with the new ones. This is something that never happens in any other temple in the world. Not only the appearance of the deities, but the history of the temple, the events that happen, the kind of devotees it attracted, everything is really interesting to know. So in this video, we have decided to tell you everything that we know about the Puri Jagannath Swami temple. Let's get started. So to begin with, let's first know a story which explains why and how this temple was constructed. This story is a bit lengthy and it also has a lot of names. So you must pay enough attention to understand the story very well. Long long ago there lived a king named Indra Dhyumna. He was a devotee of Lord Vishnu. One fine day through the people of courtyard, he got to know about a secret place deep inside the jungle where Lord Vishnu is being worshipped as Neela Madhava. The tribal community is performing the worships and all. But for some unknown reason, this community is not revealing about this place to the outside world. And the people are thinking that there is some mystery there and that's the reason why they are keeping this as a secret. So the king became very curious and he wanted to know what exactly is happening over there. So he sent out some priests uh, to all the directions and he asked them to get the details of this place. So the priests left the kingdom and they went in each direction. After a couple of months, all of them returned unsuccessful. But one priest named Vidyapati never returned back. After travelling a lot, Vidyapati settled in a tribal village and there he fell in love with a girl named Lalita. This Lalita is the daughter of a person named Vishwavasu and he is the chief of that community. So with the permission of Vishwavasu, they both got married and they are leading a happy life. After a couple of months, Vidyapati slowly observed that this Vishwavasu is trying so hard to hide something from Vidyapati. So Vidyapati asked his wife about what's actually going on. Lalita revealed that her father is daily going into the jungle to worship Neela Madhava Swami in a secret place. So now Vidyapati is so happy that he accidentally landed at a right place. So after a lot of pressure, Vishwavasu agreed to take him to that place. And one fine day, Vishwavasu blindfolded Vidyapati and he took him deep into the jungle. But Vidyapati played a trick here. Vidyapati carried some mustard seeds with him and while they were walking, he slowly dropped the seeds on the way. So they both reached that secret place. They both had the darshan of Neela Madhava Swami and they just returned back. After returning back, Vidyapati immediately went to meet the King Indra Dhyumna and he revealed the whole story to Indra Dhyumna. Now Indra Dhyumna was very happy and he came back to Vishwavasu and now Vishwavasu understood that Vidyapati cheated him. Vishwavasu tried all the possible ways to stop both of them but he could not. So by this time, the mustard seeds dropped by Vidyapati germinated and they became plants. So following these mustard plants, Vidyapati and the king went to that secret place and to their surprise, the place was all empty. Nothing was there. They both were very disappointed and king immediately arrested Vishwavasu thinking that he has done something to hide the Neela Madhav Swami from this king. So the arrest and the torture was happening and all of them heard a voice coming from nowhere. And the voice said that, Dear King Indra Dhyumna, don't torture this Sabaras. Sabaras is actually the name of that community. It's Sabara community. So the voice also instructed the king to build a temple above the mountain named Neela. And the voice also told that after constructing the temple, Lord Vishnu would himself come there in his wooden form. So it, it was surprising for everyone to listen all this voice, but the king believed in the voice and immediately he returned back to his kingdom and started constructing a temple on this hill named Neela. The construction was done and now they were all waiting for the arrival of Lord Vishnu. So Lord Brahma asked Indra Dhyumna to wait for some more time for the arrival of Lord Vishnu. Indra Dhyumna was waiting and nothing is happening. Years were just passing like that. Frustrated with not seeing the arrival of Lord Vishnu, Indra Dhyumna was really annoyed and frustrated about this and he decided to fast until death. Now on that day he got a dream in which Lord Vishnu told him that tomorrow 
I will be floating in a sea nearby in a place named Baki Mohan. And immediately the king next day woke up and rushed to that place and he saw a huge neem wood piece floating in the sea water. So with a huge celebration and all, the king brought these wooden pieces into the kingdom and now he is looking for a skilled person to carve the idols out of this neem wood. Shockingly, no one is coming forward to carve the wood. One fine day, a person approached the king saying that he can carve the idols out of the wooden pieces but with two conditions. The first condition is he must be left in a closed room for 21 days along with the idols. And the second condition is no one should ever try to see or to observe what work is going on in the room. So with these two conditions, he agreed to carve the idols. And the king also agreed for the conditions and the work started. Days are passing but there is no single sign that some work is going on inside the room. Everyone is trying to observe but everyone are afraid. But there is no noise, there is no person coming out, there is no person going in, nothing was happening. So everyone got very curious about this and Indradyumna's wife Undicha Devi observed everything and she has now become very curious. She forced king to open the doors of the room and to see what's exactly happening over there. And with this pressure, king opened the doors of the room and disappointed to see that nothing was there except the idols and they are unfinished. The toes and fingernails, nothing was completed. And the idols were Jagannatha Swami, Balabhadra, who is also called as Balarama, and their sister Subhadra Devi. So there are three idols and they are unfinished. Now the king was very sad that he has committed a huge mistake and he decided to end his life. At that point of time, a voice came out of Jagannatha Swami's idol and the idol instructed king to establish these idols in the temple that he already constructed in the mountain. So following the instructions, he did the same. That is how Puri Jagannatha Swami temple originated. Since then, to till date, Vishwavasu's descendants are serving as servants to Lord Puri Jagannath and descendants from Vidyapati's first wife are doing the worships for the idols and uh, descendants from Vidyapati's second wife Lalita are cooks for the Puri Jagannath. Since then to till date, it's all the same. The descendants of the same people are serving. Unfortunately, we have no proofs which can explain the time period of these events. The copper inscriptions revealed that the present day temple was uh, constructed around 12th century by king named Anangabhima. Since then, many dynasties uh, took care of the temple and even currently the Gajapati dynasty is taking care of the temple. So this is the story behind the temple and this is how the, uh, the Jagannatha Swami temple originated. In the coming video, I will tell you some surprising things about this temple. Until then, keep watching and please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Keep watching. Have a good day.